Hello, history enthusiasts. The unparalleled Alexander, renowned as the Great, the ambitious Julius Caesar, a name synonymous with power, the formidable Genghis Khan, the terror of the East, and the artful Napoleon Bonaparte, the maestro of warfare. Join us as we explore the riveting climax of these four extraordinary conquerors' reigns. Ever heard of a guy who cried because he only conquered 2 million square miles? That's Alexander the Great for you, the man who made world domination his day job. For 10 years, he was on a winning streak, but his soldiers? They just wanted to go home and enjoy their spoils. But King Alex? Nah, he didn't care about wealth or ruling. He was all about the thrill of the conquest. But then, India happened. In a fierce battle against Porus, Alex lost many men. He was injured, and his horse was killed. His men, tired and weak, begged him to call it quits. And for once, the stubborn king had to listen. This was the beginning of his end. One night, his love for the bottle got the better of him, and he fell seriously ill. His generals, seizing the opportunity, asked him who would inherit his empire. His answer? To the strongest. And just like that, his generals turned on each other, tearing the Macedonian Empire apart before it could even take shape. Later, Alex became paralyzed and was declared dead. But here's the twist, Greek historians claim his body didn't decompose for six days, suggesting he was divine. But what if he wasn't dead, but in a coma? Imagine being buried alive, hearing your men plot against each other. Gives you the chills, doesn't it? Ever wondered why Caesar wept? Well, it wasn't because he got a paper cut. He was reading about Alexander the Great's achievements and felt like he was lagging behind. Talk about setting high standards. Fast forward to his reign, Caesar didn't just break the law, he smashed it to pieces, seized power, and declared himself dictator perpetual. Now that's what you call a power move. But alas, his senators didn't share his enthusiasm. They loved him so much, they stabbed him 23 times. Talk about tough love. Now, let's jump to the medieval era. Forget the Crusaders, the real star of the show was Genghis Khan. This guy conquered twice as much land as Alexander and didn't even break a sweat. He was so humble, he openly admitted he was a tyrant. No god complex here, folks. But here's the kicker, his death is shrouded in mystery. Some say he caught the plague, others claim he was shot on horseback, and a few even suggest he was castrated by a princess he'd taken as a concubine. Ouch. But hey, at least his funeral procession was to die for, literally. Imagine being so good at war, you consider it an art form. Enter Napoleon Bonaparte, the Picasso of the battlefield. This guy loved power, but not in the way you might think. He loved it like an artist loves a blank canvas. Napoleon wasn't just a conqueror, he was a memory wizard. Once, when a subordinate couldn't locate his division, Napoleon didn't just tell him where it was. He gave him a three-night itinerary, a status update, and even threw in the guy's military record for good measure. And he did this for an army of 200,000. Talk about having your ducks in a row. But here's the funny thing. Despite being a military genius, Napoleon wasn't exactly humble. He saw himself as an artist of war. The battlefield was his canvas, and every cannon fire, a stroke of his brush. So, the next time you're feeling a bit too confident, just remember, you're not Napoleon Bonaparte painting a war level of confident, a man who had all the units on the moon visualized in his mind. That's Napoleon Bonaparte for you. He swept through Europe like a hurricane, claiming victories left and right, but as the stakes escalated, so did the death toll. His downfall? The Battle of Waterloo in 1815. But the British, being the gentlemen they were, didn't sentence him to death. Instead, they put him under house arrest in a bungalow that had seen better days. Talk about a downgrade. Despite his circumstances, Napoleon lived in denial. He expected men to wear military dress and women to adorn themselves in jewels at his dinner parties. Talk about being stuck in the past. Years of isolation took their toll, and he died on May 5, 1821. His last confession? A testament to his country, his military career, and his wife, Josephine. Now that's what you call a love triangle and thus, marked the end of the era of the four great conquerors. Each met their end differently, one due to illness, another betrayed by his own men, Genghis Khan fell to an arrow, and our artist passed away in captivity. But they all shared one thing in common, they died still yearning for more. Talk about being ambitious, 